It's time for another bi-weekly news roundup into everything Tesla, and we have a lot of stuff to cover, including details of the Monroe and Associates teardown of the Model Y structural battery pack, how Rivian is getting to benefit the most from all of Tesla's recent layoffs, and how the Tesla Model 3 is the new champion of Bjorn Nyland's 1000 kilometer test. This and much more on the show, but before I get there, a quick reminder to subscribe and hit the notification bell for this channel. And of course, if you'd also like to join the more than 1,400 people who are supporting this channel financially every month from just one dollar, stick around until the end and I'll tell you how. When Tesla began making its first mass-produced car in the form of the 2012 Tesla Model S, it followed the skateboard methodology of EV design, where the battery pack was located underneath the vehicle's floor between the front and rear axles. Cells were arranged into multiple modules, which were then placed inside a metal battery case. As time has gone on, though, Tesla has turned its attention to what's known as a structural battery pack, where the larger 4680 form factor cells are integrated directly into the battery pack, and then the battery pack itself forms part of the underlying structure of the car. And as the first vehicle to make use of this new design, Giga Austin-built Tesla Model Ys have generated a lot of excitement. Auto industry teardown specialist Monroe and Associates have been slowly tearing one of these new Texas-built Model Ys apart on their YouTube channel, and this week posted a quick update detailing that it's taking longer than expected to get to individual cells. With each cell glued into the pack, Monroe Live's Corey Steuben stated that the repairability of Tesla's structural battery pack is essentially zero. However, the teardown isn't completely finished yet, and Tesla has said multiple times it hopes structural battery packs will outlive the cars they're placed in. This does feel a little like Tesla is doubling down on designs that aren't easily repairable. Apple of the auto industry, anyone? But there are benefits to this design of pack, such as reduced weight and improved safety. It's also frankly quicker for repair technicians to replace an entire pack en masse than dig around inside to replace a few faulty cells, as General Motors learned with its Chevrolet Bolt EV recall. With much of the Northern Hemisphere enduring another round of heat waves as the summer peaks, Tesla has been sending in-car messages to Tesla customers in the state of Texas to try and help reduce the demand on the electrical grid there. Unlike other US states, whose electrical grids are all interconnected, Texas's electrical grid stands alone and is underfunded, which makes it less capable of dealing with extreme weather. Tesla is currently petitioning the state's power utility regulation body, ERCOT, to allow it to operate customers' power walls as virtual power plants to help deal with peaks in demand in the Texas grid, and it already has a small demonstration program in operation involving 64 Tesla customers. But for now, it's kind of stuck asking customers not to charge their cars when the mercury soars. Over the last month, Tesla has been laying off around 10% of its staff due to concerns from Elon Musk about the US economy. The layoffs started in June, ramping upwards in recent weeks, with both salaried staff and hourly employees let go, despite Elon originally stating that only salaried staff would be fired. That's created quite a large number of people looking for jobs, and according to data from LinkedIn Navigator, exactly where former Tesla employees are going makes for some interesting reading. Tracking 457 former Tesla staff, the data shows that 56 ended up taking positions at Rivian, while 51 ended up at Apple, 51 ended up at Amazon, and 34 ended up at Lucid Motors. Other staff ended up at a mixture of tech and transportation companies, including 12 going to Redwood Materials, 10 to SpaceX, and 7 to Span. We'll be watching to see which company gets the lion's share moving forwards, but for now, Rivian seems to benefit the most. That said, with rumours that Rivian is about to hold a meeting itself this week about impending layoffs, that Tesla to Rivian pipeline may not be a long-term thing. It's been relatively quiet on Elon Musk's Twitter account, at least when it comes to details about future Tesla products, but this week Elon Musk pondered out loud on Twitter that, quote, maybe Tesla should make a highly configurable robo-van for people and cargo, end quote. As usual, many news outlets are taking this to mean that Tesla will absolutely make a robo-van, and we've seen all kinds of really incredible speculation from a heavily modified Tesla Semi through to a vehicle that looks a little more like the original design for the boring company's passenger pods, essentially a glass box with wheels that operates fully autonomously. 
It would be great to see more choice in the market, but with so many products in the pipeline right now, Tesla risks overstretching itself by planning yet another vehicle, especially if Elon Musk is right about the economy. As one Twitter user put it this week, quote, more Musk kids have been delivered in 2022 than Cybertrucks, Roadster and semis combined, end quote. Hmm. YouTuber Bjorn Nyland is known for his exhaustive reviews and tests of EVs, including his banana box test and real-world range test. And this week, the latest iteration of the Tesla Model 3 performance set a new record in one of Bjorn's suite of tests, the 1000 km challenge. Armed with a fully charged car, Bjorn tests how long it takes to complete 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles, factoring in stops to recharge. And until recently, the fastest electric car on that test was the Tesla Model 3 long-range all-wheel drive from 2020, setting a 9-hour, 20-minute time, just 20 minutes slower than the Kia Seed plug-in hybrid that Bjorn Nyland used as a reference vehicle. In his new test, the 2022 Tesla Model 3 Performance manages the journey in 9 hours and 15 minutes, snatching the ground from its older sibling. So if you want to drive a long way, with as little time stopped as charging as possible, it's pretty obvious which car to buy. Tesla's proprietary charge inlet, first debuted on the Model S and used on all North American versions of its vehicles, is the smallest charging connector in the market that's capable of both AC and DC quick charging. And that's led solar electric vehicle startup Aptera to call on the US government to force an adoption of the Tesla charging inlet as the standard charging connector for all electric vehicles. Aptera argues that Tesla's inlet and connector is elegant and well-designed, something it obviously doesn't think is true for the other charging plugs and inlets on the market. And while Aptera does have a point, Tesla's supercharger connector is much smaller and easier to use than many of the alternatives, I very much doubt that the rest of the auto industry, or indeed the US government, will buy into this plea. And with so much in the way of investment already spent on EV charging in the US to support CCS, I suspect any kind of changeover would be both slow and cost prohibitive. In fact, given some of the legal requirements Tesla set out when it said other automakers could use its standard, I just don't see this happening. CCS isn't perfect, but it's what's generally now used by cars that aren't Teslas, and in Europe, it's already used by Tesla. It's easier for one company to change to meet the industry standard than it is for an entire industry to adopt a new one. Tesla has already done it in Europe after all. Tesla's Giga Berlin is currently undergoing some work on its production line in order to increase vehicle output, but this week, German publication Automobile Vosch claimed that Tesla's factory has, to date, only produced solid black or pearl white multi-coat Tesla Model Ys. Without a Tesla PR department to corroborate these claims, it's hard to check the veracity of the reporting, but anecdotal evidence collected by the publication says that customers who ordered red, blue or silver Model Ys have been told their cars won't arrive until March 2023 at the earliest if they're being made in Berlin, while black or white models are being produced and delivered as quickly as possible. This is, though, particularly confusing, since Elon Musk has long been talking up the capabilities of the Giga Berlin paint shop, which at one time he said would be the most advanced paint shop in the world, capable of producing paint finishes that change according to the angles of the vehicle. I'm sure we're going to get an update on this, and hopefully we'll see other colours coming soon, so stay tuned. Sticking with factories, reporting this week says that Tesla has ordered the machines required to build the motors that will power the Tesla Cybertruck. While the reporting currently cites unnamed sources, Tesla's production of Cybertruck is expected to be in full swing in about a year's time, with vehicles due to be delivered to early customers by the end of next year. Given that it normally takes about a year or so to get production lines ready and geared up, this report does feel like it's timed just right for the start of production next July at Giga Austin. For a while now, Tesla has allowed its customers to change the external pedestrian alert and horn noises its cars make using the boombox feature, something that's actually already got it into trouble with the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And this week, NHTSA issued a statement saying that a request it received in 2019 proposing that future electric cars offer driver-selectable pedestrian warning sounds is not going to be allowed to move forwards. The argument from the agency is that it does not have supporting data in favour of the proposal, and it comments that the safety of pedestrians and vulnerable road users is a important factor. A consistent recognisable sound for each vehicle is therefore preferable. 
to finish, let's do our usual three-story wrap-up of smaller stories that you may or may not want to know about. As I'm sure many of you know, Elon Musk announced this week that he would be pulling out of his offer to buy Twitter. The reason? Effectively, Musk says he wasn't happy with the data provided by Twitter, or lack thereof, concerning bot accounts on the platform. While Musk is being threatened with a breach of contract by Tesla, now some Tesla Q sorts are accusing Musk of taking the Twitter deal to sell off Tesla stock without drawing attention to himself. Honestly, I'm not convinced. Tesla appears to be gathering a large amount of mega packs outside of its Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada. It's not clear why this is happening, but some news outlets are suggesting that either Tesla is readying itself to fulfill a massive new static energy storage project, or it's just waiting for parts to finish the units before they're shipped. Finally, Tesla is continuing its expansion of Starlink satellite internet terminals at supercharger sites across the world, with more popular supercharger sites now getting queues during peak periods and holidays, as was the case in parts of the US during the July 4th weekend, being able to have fast free internet to pass the time is a big bonus for Tesla customers. And of course, with superchargers now open to non-Tesla owners in some markets, I'm guessing this could even be a new revenue stream for Tesla too. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you really liked today's video, why not leave us a super thanks? It's easy to do and everything you send does go towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, do make sure that you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take 2, and give the bell a gentle ding to be told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew. Go out to everyone who makes TE possible. That includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those who just watch and share. If you are a supporter at the charged up level, you'll see your name right here on my right. And if you've just joined, I am sorry if your name isn't showing. We've had a lot of people join and we only currently render the list every week or so. So sometimes our videos are out of kilter with the actual names of people supporting the channel. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Mira Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Dan Blair, Jim Burness, Chris Asentar, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde, and of course, out of this world thanks to our Starman level supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Redar, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Blue says hello, Kevin Burrowbridge, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you'd like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or show us your support through Ko-fi or by buying something like this cool t-shirt from our swag store. Links below. And if you're unable to support us financially, please know that just watching the video and sharing it really does make a massive difference to how our channel grows. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.